Because step out, you've humiliated this guy enough, and there seems to be no bottom for if some of you. If he said a so, it would all be uh, over, yeah, Senator So Graham. why don't we dock him in water and see if he floats? Wow, how did Lindsey Graham go from fierce Donald Trump critic to one of his most vocal defenders? That question was at the heart of a Washington Post profile, Graham, this week. Graham said he, quote, really doesn't care what people say about his turnaround. As the Post summed up Graham's thinking, quote, better to have someone whom the president trusts enough to listen when he talks sense, someone who makes sure he nominates Judge Kavanaugh instead of Judge Judy, someone to make sure he knows when a rocket launch on TV is happening now or in the past. That's what matters, said Graham. Not all people say about him. And joining the panel is Washington Post columnist E.J. Dion. Back with us, Jason Johnson and Kate and Dawson. So, E.J., we were talking in the break, and you were saying that people who think Lindsey Graham has changed just don't remember Lindsey Graham. Right. Well, Lindsey Graham has gone through stages in his life. We forget that Lindsey Graham was an impeachment manager mm -hmm. uh, in the Clinton impeachment, which many people at the time saw as a very partisan thing to do. Then in 2000, he supported John McCain in that vicious South Carolina primary. Yep. Uh, he and Mark Sanford kind of stood out from much of the rest of the establishment down mm -hmm. there. And then began the long period of Lindsey, John McCain, and Joe Lieberman. Yep. Um, and that was Lindsey Graham, who's in people's heads to a large degree, particularly journalists' heads. Yes. Um, but he was always a conservative. And a funny thing happened to his friend Mark Sanford, mm -hmm. which is Sanford lost the primary because he was opposite Positional to Trump. And early on in the Trump years, there was polling in South Carolina which showed that if Lindsey Graham continued to be anti Trump, mm -hmm. he could suffer the same fate as Mark Sanford. Yep. He decided not to do that. And I think the last point is a judicial nomination is one thing that unites the entire Republican Party That's from right. the Trump wing to yep. the business wing. Yep. Uh, and Even so some never going, Trumpers, by the way. What, I'm sorry? Even some never so, Trumpers. Yeah. Yeah. And so no matter, you know, so going crazy on this. It looks crazy to us. Some of the things he said are outrageous, but it doesn't hurt him in the Republican Party. Yeah. In fact, Caton, you know, it, this probably helps him in South Carolina in 2020 when he's up for re-election. It's made him like a hero to the Trump base, uh, whereas he was at one point uh, not so much. Well, I, I, Lindsey Graham and I are great friends for over 20 years, and he's a wonderful politician, and better than that, a good tactician. But Lindsey Graham doesn't lay awake worrying about his elections in 2020 in South Carolina, and evidence of that is in 2005, he was a member of the Gang of 14 that stood up against changing the rules in the United States Senate to move the filibuster away from 60. And he took a lashing in South Carolina for that from Republicans. In 2013, he stood up on the Senate floor. And November 21, 2013 is when all of this started, Joy. That's when Harry Reid changed the rules, removed the filibuster. And that's what Lindsey Graham said would change the pace and the tone of the Senate forever in opposition of changing those rules both times. So he has standing in South Carolina. He, he drew opposition both times for those stances and now what Lindsey Graham has said has come true. We are completely at a partisan nation, a partisan country in Washington. Uh, everybody who hates Washington just remembered why they hate Washington last week. Uh, and so uh, to everybody's deference, Lindsey Graham is, is, is a wonderful senator from South Carolina, but better than that, he's a patriot. And, and, and he, but, like all can, of our senators in the past, mm -hmm. are going to play ball with the president's joy. Strom Thurmond, yeah. Fritz Hollings, they're going to play ball with the president because it's good for our state. And let me, let me ask you, let me just remind the, the audience that the reason that Senator Harry Reid, no relation, had to change the, <laughs> or, or decided he needed to change the filibuster rule, is that Mitch McConnell, who, I don't think there's anyone who, who relishes wielding pure partisan power and, and just basically making the opposition non-existent more than Mitch McConnell, I think more so even than Donald Trump. Mitch McConnell decided they were going to filibuster every judge that the President Obama put up, that essentially Mitch McConnell declared only Republicans may seat judges not Democrats, and not that president. That's why that was changed, right? I Lindsay? just want to jump right. in that he, Harry Reid did not change the filibuster rule for Supreme right. Court nominees. That court was right. Mitch right. McConnell Absolutely. who did that, not Harry Reid. Not Harry Reid. And to say that one inevitably led to the other is just an alibi yeah. because Mitch McConnell is the guy who changed this rule. Yeah, and I'm going to get Jason in a minute, but isn't that the case, um, Caton? The Republican Party under Mitch McConnell decided that they would not permit the President of the United States, Barack Obama, to seat 
any federal judges. They filibustered every judge. That is why that rule was changed. Well, we also remember 2005 when 50, when, 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 when there were 53 some odd Democrats in 2013 who did it for Harry Reid. So you got to got to give it both ways. It wasn't just one way here. But it they was held, done they because held up of over the 80, over 80 judges for George W. Bush. Two of those were my friends who, who, who couldn't get confirmation hearings. Let, let me get you in here, Jason, because the reality is, is that, you know, everyone sort of argues back and forth. I think the, the media, I think that um, EJ is right, that the media sort of fell in love with this idea that, yeah. that there is always a good guy Republican. Right. They just pick someone. It's Jeff Flake one day, and then it's Susan Collins, and it's Lindsey Graham. Mm -hmm. But it's just actually, they're just really all just conservative Republicans. Yeah, and they're, they're, just, they're just politicians. It, they're it's, politicians. No, it's no big difference. It's Diet Coke and regular Coke, right? It's, it's the same guy. Here's, here's what's interesting, I think, about Lindsey Graham. When he gave his, you can call it the Braveheart speech, the Queen speech, whatever, they should have just given a slow clap, right? Because it was nonsense. Everything Lindsey Graham is doing is what every politician does when they have a powerful president in office. Yeah. I'm going to kiss his butt. And I think it can't be missed that also he is very close friends with Jeff Sessions yeah. and he knows his boy Jeff is going to be Although he would take job. his job, I think. And it, that's yeah. what this is about. I am fairly sure that Lindsey Graham probably talks to Jeff Sessions. He's like, when you get fired, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and take your job and you'll be the first phone call that I make. All of this is kissing up to the president, which is amazing to me because if Mitt Romney and, 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 uh, uh uh, um, gosh, from New Jersey, you know, New Jersey Chris governor, Christie. Chris Christie have shown us kissing up to Trump doesn't, doesn't work. Doesn't He'll help. still play you. Yeah. So that's what I don't understand about Graham's behavior, other than the fact that he's just been a conservative all along. And I think the thing we still have to explain, and I'd be curious how Caton does this, he's really changed his tune completely on Donald Trump. Yeah. In other words, we're not talking here about somebody who was mildly critical of Trump and then, then moved to be mildly favorable. He went from being a really tough, tough critic of Trump all the way over to somebody who is virtually down the line with Donald Trump yeah. and that's what is why everyone sort of says how did he do this and it's very hard not to look at the polling in South Carolina as yeah. part of this and yeah maybe he does want another office but yes. this is a very sharp change in the guy how do you explain that Caden well, first of all, Lindsey Graham's main reason for running for president of the United States against Donald Trump and 15 other people was to make sure that the military funding and the military was not left behind. And one of, Lindsey Graham was one of the foremost experts on, on, on national and international policy. So Lindsey's going to put himself at the table and not on the table to be cut up in any political conversation. He is going to continue to do business with the Democrats. He, uh, he always has. He believes in the body and, and he's a pretty good statesman. So, so whether the president would have been Hillary Clinton or whether the president was going to be Donald Trump, Lindsey Graham is going to get along with him because it's to his benefit and our benefit. But maybe not if it's Barack Obama. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I, I mean, I'm wrong. I, I mean, anyway, E.J. Dion, um, thank you very much. Kate and Dawson, we'll see you next hour. Jason Johnson, thank you very much. Appreciate thank you. you. And thank in our you. next...